so um, what we are going to do uh, in this particular video is we have already looked at how to um, uh, train uh, a classification model using decision tree uh, algorithm and um, uh, we have also seen how to predict the well like, you know how to find the predicted values of the variables using that decision tree algorithm and created confusion matrix but what we did was we only uh, did this for tra training set so that is uh, you know we, we tested uh, how good the um, model was for the uh, for, for the set uh, that was used to create the model itself what we should do is we should really separate train and test sets um, uh, so that it is trained for a different set and tested for a different set so we are kind of going to do that um, and I'm going to just um, um, uh, copy a couple of these uh, commands uh, 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 just to save a little bit of time Uh, so these are the two commands uh, that we have. Uh, let me just uh, make this a little longer so, here, so we can see it all. Uh, so what uh, what we did here is I created a um, a subset of uh, the original uh, matrix, which is house price is our original matrix. And what we did was we picked 70 uh, rows from that, as you can see right here. Uh, and uh, how did we do that? Uh, by uh, using a a uh, function called sample uh, um, that generates uh, random numbers uh, going from um, 1 through uh, 70, right? I mean, like there will be uh, 70 different random numbers that will be created, and the, the values of these random numbers will be between um, uh, 1 and the number of rows in house price. Another uh, new function that we are looking at here is n row which basically tells you the number of rows in the matrix that we have. We also created, uh, there were 87, uh, although some of those things may actually be repeated. So these 17 samples uh, that I'm using for house test. So house test does is essentially the same thing, but 17 samples instead of 70. Um, there might be some duplications, uh, but uh, hopefully there will also be some different uh, samples. So we, are, we have a, uh, a set called house train which had 70 um, uh, rows from the original set and another uh, one called house test which had 17 rows uh, and now what we are going to do is uh, we'll just have a quick look at these just to see if there is uh, if they are the same or different so I'm just going to um, uh, print those two right here Uh, so for house train, uh, I, I'm just looking at first five columns and first five rows, and we can see that um, uh, the rows that were picked up uh, were uh, row number 30, 13, 69, 67, 18, and uh, the five columns. We, I didn't want to print all the columns because there are far too many columns. For house test, let's just uh, uh, confirm that they are actually different numbers. So here the rows that are picked up are 72, 69, 79, 8, and 51. So now we have two different data sets and what we are going to do is we are going to use our part just like what we did before to train but instead of using house price as our data uh, what we are doing going to do is we are going to we, we are going to use a uh, house train as our data uh, so let's just have a look at that I'm going to um, just cut and paste some parts uh, from previous um, uh, command and uh, so we have our part house value range will be predicted using everything else and our data is house train and so tr that would be the data that will be used for testing and then uh, we will go to the bitter end uh, with mean split to be equal to one for control um, and then we will try uh, some other control mechanisms to see what kind of results we get uh, so uh, so now treehouse is now trained. Uh, I did not load the library, so I should say library R part, and then now I can just repeat. This again. Um, so house train was used for training. Now what we are going to do is first of all see how it works for 
the train set itself and then we are going to see how it works for test set test set is the data that was not used while creating the model so that is a true test what's the point of predicting um, uh, the uh, the house prices for uh, uh, for a record that was used in the decision in, in, in creating the decision model because we already know the house pricing range but you know like say a brand new record comes along that we have never seen before that's the one that we want to predict there's no point in predicting trying to predict say for example stock price um, on uh, uh, like yesterday or day before or the day before that or a month ago uh, what we want to do is predict the stock price for example tomorrow right there's no point in um, predicting something that we already know so so that's why what we are going to do is first of all just to see how good the model fit itself so I'm going to now uh, look at uh, this particular prediction so let's see how well it fits and how can I do that I can uh, do that by looking at the predict function right so I'm going to now uh, type that predict function here so we are going to pre like you know we are going to uh, store it in a variable called predict train and we are going to use the predict function we are going to use treehouse as the model new data is the same as what was used for training um, and uh, let's just do that uh, then actually um, uh, we can look at the confusion matrix the way we have been looking at uh, so far so let me just uh, type that in uh, so what we are saying here is my confusion matrix for the train data set and I'm using CM1 because we're going to have CM1 CM2 CM3 we're going to try various different ways of training just like we did in the previous video so here what we are saying is create the table of uh, house train uh, house value range and predict train and we can just have a quick look at that uh, it's not too bad well I mean you know we went to the beta train anyway so it should have a perfect fit and we, we do have a perfect fit now what will happen if I did the same thing but now instead of using um, uh, instead of using train data use the test data remember test data is not is it was something that was not um, uh, the, uh, was not seen uh, by the model creation process so this is where um, uh, we have a true testing of our model and just going to uh, recall some of the previous commands and now we have predict test so we can now again create the confusion matrix but instead of uh, it being for test uh, train it's going to be for test so we'll see what that is like just changing all occurrence of train with test so now my test confusion matrix is going to be um, looking at uh, the test data set so let's just have a look at that particular matrix and it was not too bad um, it only had uh, two three four as the values and uh, then one of the two was uh, uh, misclassified as three but other than that I think everything else worked out okay um, so that was uh, uh, that was the prediction test because we really went to the bitter end and uh, it went um, uh, that is mean split equal to one now we can do the same thing now uh, but this time I'm going to uh, when I'm training I'm going to have um, just like use, use the training data set but uh, instead of mean split to be equal to 1 I'm going to have mean split to be equal to 5 the way we had it before okay and then uh, let's do the uh, prediction first for the train data set that sounds good predict train uh, is equal to predict treehouse data set oh actually 
No, the, we use the treehouse model, and new data is house train, just like before. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, the type is equal to classification, and then again, I'm going to uh, uh, can create the confusion matrix for the train set, like so. But instead of CM1, I'm going to say CM2 because this is a second uh, prediction model that we are working now with mean split equal to 2, sorry, mean split equal to 5. And now uh, if we look at CM2, uh, we can see that uh, we have a few misclassifications. And let's uh, do exactly the same thing, uh, but this time uh, for test. Uh, so. Um, let me just type this as test, still treehouse, test, and then type is equal to class, of course. And let's create the confusion matrix. Uh, this time, instead of train, I'm going to use test. And let's look at test CM2. And uh, the and, and in, in this particular case, just like before, uh, we have one misclassification. One of the uh, um, labels that was actually two has uh, come out as three. But other than that, everything else was OK. Uh, so even though uh, we, have, we, we used a um, a, a different criteria that is we didn't go to the bitter end mean split was equal to five um, our pre, uh, the prediction test performance was not affected and in in general what happens is actually if you over train it for the uh, training data uh, it sometimes falls apart for the test data so it's always good idea to not go to the bitter end that is mean split equal to one uh, but rather uh, stay at a little higher level and we have a small data set 87 just imagine if we had like millions of observations uh, so in that particular case you don't want to go all the way to mean split equal to one you want to stop at I don't know thousand or something like that uh, but in any case so this is how we can split the data set into a uh, train and test data set and then train the model using train data set and then test it for both train data set and test data set just to see how well it fit the original data and how well it managed to predict for the test data. So I think that's a fairly um, a concise uh, video, so I'll stop here.